Harvard Business Review recently invited me to reflect on my two and a half decades of work in this area. Uh, and so I took a couple of weeks off and did that. And to my surprise, there were some insights that uh, came into focus that I hadn't fully accounted for before. Uh, one is that transformation launches to be successful have to be done fairly rapidly. Speed is important in launching a transformation because the world is full of distractions and if you don't have a compressed launch agenda, uh, executives will soon lose focus and so will the whole transformation agenda. The second thing that I began to realize is that organizations over time when they are pursuing say the same business model for an extended period of time build up uh, a number of inhibitors uh, in, that become embedded in the organization. And everybody sort of knows what some of these inhibitors are and from time to time they can become irritating but they're sort of benign in terms of their effect until of course you are challenged with a transformation agenda. And when you have to rise to a transformation challenge any one of these embedded inhibitors can derail the transformation launch. And then the last insight, and I'm really glad I took the two weeks to look at this, uh, is that it's important to address the, uh, the inhibitors in a particular sequence. Doing one before the other in a certain order makes a big difference in the overall success of the transformation launch. When you start off, the first break you're going to hit is the culture is already focused. They've already got things they're committed to. Their agendas are already full. And the business of, of doing business today is very much on everybody's minds. It's hard to get that to, to uh, and there's some real good reasons for that. It's hard to break out of it. A second sort of break or inhibitor is what I call the business as usual management process. And this has to do not so much with the management culture, it has to do with the fact that uh, the management process itself is incapable, the day-to-day -day management process by itself is probably insufficient, incapable of enabling you to successfully plan and launch a transformation. A good way to have this happen and what you'll see is uncoordinated functional initiatives. You'll see a whole lot of smart people at the top of an organization who are, who are trying to do good and do well on behalf of the company and so they are promulgating initiatives and programs and so forth and trying to help but what happens when you're down below and you get all that incoming got into the field organization and I talked to two people the first two people I talked to told me the same story and they were different parts of the field organization they said we get this stuff all the time we get memos and emails almost every day asking us to do this or that or the other and we have these, see these objectives over here? We have these objectives we're trying to achieve, and yet we have all these other things we're trying to respond to. And I said, hey, it was, it not blew me away. It said, I said, well, how do you handle that? It said, simple, two-drawer method. I said, what's a two-drawer method? Uh, they said, well, we take all of the stuff that comes in from corporate in a month, and we put it in a drawer, drawer number one and we close the drawer. But if no one calls about that, that, uh, that request in that month, guess where the request goes? Drawer number two, okay? And what, how does it get out of drawer number two? The same process. If somebody calls during the month two and follows up on it, it's brought out and dealt with. But if it's not, guess where it goes from drawer two at the end of month two? Goes in the round file. I don't see why I need to allocate those resources over there because they're not doing well may not do well in the future without and, and so you get this disconnect between the strategy of trans transforming the company and what the subunits are focused on and then again I think I mentioned above the anxiety about personal competency sometimes we really get into this say you say gee I'm not, not sure I'm really up to this I may not be the right person for this and that's another reason you might hold back a little bit let me just give you a little bit of information that knocked me off my feet when I saw it about five years ago this is a study of American workers, 11,000 of them, 
by the Harris Corporation. Survey study, fewer than half of the surveyed employees say that they have a clear understanding of what their companies are trying to achieve. Let's just take this room and ask everybody over here to leave. That's about what you've got when you do that, and then go run your company. If you've been good at all in the first part, you're beginning to really deliver some results, all right? Some big results, very encouraging. What happens there? People say, hmm, we don't need to go rethink all this stuff. Let's put it on autopilot, okay? They'll be, they'll be asking, some people will be saying, well, do we need to go through a process of rethinking about this and resetting these goals and initiatives at the end of the year? Most of them will say, no, we're doing fine. Let's just keep it going the way it is. And that's totally out of, out of tune, particularly with the kind of environment that you find yourselves in. Each one of you in this room, when the basic transformation constructs are being built and rolled out, you need to insist on mandatory participation in the process, in the launch process, by everybody reporting to you. But at the same time, you need to create what I call safe passage, because people are not going to do something they think might be crazy. So you need to create, you have to, everybody needs to be involved. If you leave what we call wallflowers, you can, if you leave people standing on the sides of the playground and not in the game, they'll never learn how to play the game. And they certainly won't be able to coach people down below at the next level about how to get aboard. It is obvious that if you're going to launch a transformation, you can't do it in the existing mechanism you have in place. You need to create a very simple, fast-acting overlay to get through it so that you can get on to execution. And basically what I call, I call it the no-slack launch. You've got to have the courage to focus an organization this complex on three but no more than four initiatives. Okay? And within those initiatives, you've got to have the courage and commitment not to proliferate a whole bunch of to-dos. So what really works here is you've got three or four initiatives and two no more than three areas of focus that are well operationalized within them. That's where you can get a lot of wood behind the arrow. What about recalcitrant executives? You need, you need committed and capable people who can lead the transformation. There's just no substitute. At any point in the hierarchy, as it spreads out, as it, any one of those nodes there will cast a shadow like this down below. And two or three people can, can cancel out 50% of the effort just by passively uh, acquiescing to the transformation as opposed to trying to do something real about it. Where I've seen the success is where you really think very carefully about that training and you align it to the key initiatives in your transformation. But before you launch the competency part of development part, you get everybody aligned and committed and engaged. And so the, the, this rapid approach for going straight through an organization is one way to get that line of sight accountability. And of course, you have to tie in management performance. This is the point where leaders like you in this room need to do what I call shift into a ballast and keel role. Now, those are unique kinds of terms. They pulled out of sailing. Ballast is the thing that's at the bottom of the ship that keeps the ship from doing this and this. And keel is the thing under the ship that keeps you from doing this and this. And so at a point, at this point, you have to shift from, shift from thinking about big ideas, being in front of people, orchestrating uh, engagement and so forth. You have to shift back into a role where you're the steady rock, where you're the one that's now shifting into tactical implementation, where people can see that you're engaged and not backing off and letting other people do the work. So that sort of brings me to a conclusion of the things that inhibit the launch of transformation and the kinds of tactical things that each of you in this room can do to make